So I said I was going to upload a video on uh, Messerstel. Um, now, understand that, there, that this is a an object that is generally considered genuine by the majority of scholarship. The problem is, what happens, and this happens numerous not like if you've gone through just the last few videos you probably know that hey this is what mainstream says but here's what a few other people that are educated say here's what mainstream believe generally but this is something that have called this into question now whenever you see these the people that are, are highly educated working on the same material that that have a different opinion it's probably good to look at them because let me just say even in the Bible there's a verse that says you must not follow after a crowd to do evil how do people not the main two might not be being evil but they are very close-minded and the reason is once they start saying well most of us think this then you pressure on the other guys that don't that's my, part of what my channel does is exposes a lot of this so when it comes to the message though I don't think most people realize just how ridiculous this thing is. I didn't until someone brought it to my attention. So this object um, is roughly um, parallel to the story that we have in Second Kings chapter 3. So Mesha is the king of Moab. He's fighting with the kings of Israel and Judah in the story. And this is the story where Elisha the uh the prophet basically said bring me a mental and play me a tune and all that sort of ridiculous <laughs> it's a funny story but for if you look at it oh yeah this is just giving us the more about side of it now that looks good and in a matter of fact you look this is why most people think it's genuine, because it is in the Hebrew script of that time, supposedly. But there's a few issues. First of all, the person that discovered this had a lot of his other material, his other, um, the person that brought this to light, a lot of his other discoveries have been frowned on because of suspicion of forgery or things like that. The stone is very, very intact for an object that's 2,800 years old. Very, very intact. Except for one piece, which I'll get to in a minute. The, yeah, the script is old, but it's very, very perfect script. Like, wow. Okay, that, that in itself is not difficult, but there's a few other oddities, like, in order to get this thing legible, you know what these guys did? He threw it in a fire, and broke the bottom piece off. You think I'm joking? Go down to the video description. If I can, I'll put a link to the, um, to an academic article on this. He threw it in a fire, and broke the bottom piece off. The piece that just so happened, now get this, just so happened. To mention, we were told that that Peter Bokoff mentioned the House of David. Yeah. Okay. Besides that, there's another couple of issues I've been mentioning in my last couple of videos that YHW seems to be the early form. Of, of the Tetragrammaton, of the name of God, but in this particular inscription, twice the name is set out in YHWH, at a time that we don't see that in the 9th century BCE. That's odd. That's very odd. Further, it lists a lot of cities and stuff. Oh, these cities are in Moab. There you go. Are you sure though? Because if you look at the list of those cities, 
Why are they the same city that are in Isaiah chapter 25? Like you couldn't get an imagination to figure out to look at the ancient Moabite city. Let's just copy the list in Isaiah. The way Mesha comes across in this inscription is also a tiny bit suspect. If you actually look at a translation of Bistel, he comes across as extremely angry. So this does not really match the biblical account very well of a person that was so determined to sacrifice their own son. This does not come across as the same individual. But you could say, well, that's the Bible. Okay. There are other issues with this tale. Um, but one of the big things is that instead of investigating this properly, like they probably should have done, fact checking everything, which, uh, let me just say something. Biblical archaeology, the majority of it, they never back. They never go back and try and figure out the story of how the thing came into being. In fact, look at the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, we'll be getting it out eventually. I've had a, have, I've had, had a kick in the past about this one recently, and I had to rethink everything. If you look at the way the Dead Sea Scrolls were done, it was just like they were rushed in because of political issues, actually. Around the 1947, 1948 time, something going on in that area. You figure it out. The message still is no different. And so are a lot of these people. I'm not saying that all of these are for you. They're not. But people jump on the bandwagon. I want to deep things as early as they can. To, like, take the Mount Ebal encryption people are jumping on. They're, 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 we haven't even figured it out yet. And they're already saying, well, this is what it says. And this is when it dates. That they have found in a garbage pile. So... What, this is how we think that, and these are not just, we're not talking Christian apologetics, these are people, not all of them are Christian, they're just jumping on it because it's going to be make them, it's, big, it's a big thing. They want it to be a, a big biblical find that everyone's going to see, and they're going to be remembered for it. it, it this is why Main Street jumps on things like this, so I don't think the message deal is authentic. And again, if I can, I'll put a link in the video description. So, we're going to operate at, without authenticating this particular um, inscription. For partisan people, well, so be it. But I'm going to operate on the uh, idea that this particular cell is a forgery. Thank you.